It's a great day to be alive on the planet, spinning through the universe with no control to stop when no breaks. I'm still working on theme songs for the show. I'm Jan Arden. Welcome to the Jan Arden podcast and show. I'm here with Sarah Burke. What a delight it was to see Caitlin last week. Oh my goodness. It was so nice. And for someone that I've never met in person, I feel like I know this woman. We've, we've talked so much over the last six months, just making sure that everything with you is taken care of. It's been really cool. She knows everything about everything. She does. Anything that's going on in the world, Caitlin knows what's happening. It's true. Like in pop culture, in politics, in world affairs, in my personal life, <laughs> in your personal life. Uh, anyway, yeah, it was it was great to talk to her and Uh, It was nice to hear everybody's comments. So we've got a really, really great show for everybody today. We're going to make sure that we preface this with uh, a little bit of a a warning, a little bit of a heads up. We do have some adult content and we just want to make sure that you don't have young people in the room. It does involve sexuality, uh, talking about bodily functions. Listen, I'm just putting it out there. Alert. You don't want to have, you know, young children listening to this today. And usually it's pretty safe. We're talking about, you know, pretty benign things, but it's good to have these conversations, Sarah, and you're very open about it. I think uh, I would have loved to have heard uh, Caitlin chime in about this. And you might find it unusual to be promoting somebody else's podcast, but I think there's room for everybody in the arts. And it's so great to not only support other artists, but to support other, what am I even saying? What am I? What, Female it, identifying creators. Yes. Thank <laughs> you very much. Cynthia Loist and Josie, they let rip on their absolutely wonderful podcast. They, they debuted it last week. You've been doing some stuff with, with Josie Dye and Cynthia Loist. And uh, what are your thoughts? What, what do you, have you had a chance to listen to some of these clips? The podcast is called Unmentionables, and it's exactly that. It's kind of unmentionable. It's things that we as women or female identifying people may be uncomfortable talking about. And yes, I've, I've kind of had a front row seat. Um, I did a little bit of production for them. So it's been really cool. And maybe we'll bring this up with Josie when, when they join, because I think they're trying to tackle what happens to us when we hold in our shame, right? Mm -hmm. Basically, years ago, I'm in Chicago at Lollapalooza with a girlfriend. What are the chances you see someone from Toronto, right? I see a colleague, Josie Dye, say what's up. And she was like a little bit weird about it. And turns out what was going on for her this particular weekend, it's all in the second episode of the podcast. So you can go listen to that now. I'm not going to give away the full thing. Yeah. But she was weird with me because she was all worried about what other people were thinking because of shame. And as you know, we work together too at Toronto radio station. So anyway, it's just so funny, very full circle. And now, you know, years later, she's telling this story on a podcast that I'm like, that's why, that's why she was weird. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to that conversation. Um, Yeah. You want to stay tuned for that. Cynthia Loist, most of you will know from the social, she has been a co-host on that show, gosh, season 10 this year. And Josie Dye, I just saw something on her socials. Gosh, she's been in radio for 20 years. Yeah. So they're both, they're both kind of high profile women, certainly in Toronto, Cynthia a little more so because of the national coverage of the social, but for them to take this on, I mean, obviously really close personal things they talk about, people are going to see them out and about and at dinner. And, you know, (laughs) I, I'm really looking forward to how this podcast unfolds and, you know, people will want to jump through their radios and ask questions and be involved. I hope that they, do field questions going forward, you know, because people can have anonymity. They can fire in something probably, well, maybe they can't unless you're banana one, two, three, four on Facebook. (laughs) Bring him back banana. (laughs) It's the only thing I can think of. (laughs) What's something that has been like an unmentionable for you, like something that you kept inside for a really long time and now you feel so much better now that it's out? Gosh, I... You know, there's so there's things that you would just think are so banal. One of the most embarrassing things that ever happened to me, and you're going to think this is so out there. Okay. I was on a plane. Okay. Packed. I'm 
sitting in like a group, my road manager is sitting behind me. I had had a bad tummy. Just I had a bad tummy. And I was quite, you know, stinky. You know, I had gas. <laughs> okay. like, I hope this goes away by the time I get on the goddamn plane. Yeah. So I get on the plane. We take off. I'm just sweating, trying to hold my butt cheeks together. I wasn't worried about crap in my pants, but I was worried about letting air out of my body. So I don't know if this is fear or shame or what, but I ended up farting. <laughs> on the plane. I could feel the smell come up around my head and it was horrible. And, you know, back in the day, it was like he who smelt it dealt it. And I literally could hear people verbalizing. <laughs> and the people beside me were, I don't know where they were looking. I don't know if they knew it was me. I was hoping that I just blended into the crowd and that they, it might've been the person across the aisle that they couldn't have zeroed me out. But I kind of went out of my way to go, oh, wow. You know, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, and it bothered me. I was so embarrassed when I got off that flight and, and having it happen again, you know, it was still ongoing. And I, I literally had sweat pouring down my back, trying to not go through that. But it, it, if I think about it, it embarrasses me to this day. I don't know if that's a secret, but I remember telling Chris years later and he was just like, Oh my God, I remember <laughs> That's so funny. But bodily functions, right? That's one of the things. Bodily that functions is really a big thing. And, and certainly I'm sure the girls will cover it all. Here's one different type of air. Um, I had my boyfriend over. I went to the gym in the morning after we had a, a nice morning. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We had a nice morning. I think I know where this is going. <laughs> There's an exercise where, you know, you're, it's a glute exercise, basically, and you have a weight kind of over your pelvis and you're lifting up your legs to work the glutes. Yes. Well, with all that pressure on that area, you know, some air after a good morning kind of oh, came. God. So uh, was it audible? Yes. <laughs> oh. Happens to people who have good mornings. Well, the Jan Arden podcast... Um, listen, my friend instructed yoga. She's still a yoga instructor, but she's been doing it for years. And she said, Jan, I'm telling you, there is no, I don't think I've ever done a class or very few where there hasn't been a huge release of air. And she goes, I say to people now at the top of my class, because women from all ages, there's men there. It's not just females. And she's like, listen, <laughs> we're going to probably have some sounds today. And let's just stay focused and <laughs> let's not be embarrassed about it. But I like how she took the horse by the reins because for a long time, she just like everybody else was very silent, didn't say anything, thought, you know, uh, didn't, we're just going to ignore it. And so the whole rest of the class was little giggles. And, and then, of course, the person that it had happened to was probably doing what I was doing, which was, you know, holding it together and praying that it didn't <laughs> happen again. So... I love that she does it off the top of the class. I was listening to another podcast this week and um, she worded it like this. Uh, she was talking about what cleaning staff have to deal with in a hotel. And she's like, one time I left a pair of panties sunny side up and it was my week. And you were going to say. I had so many period I, women out there that are, you know, perimenopausal or postmenopausal or going through that or going through that change of really, really heavy periods and all that stuff. It's a nightmare. It's, you know pants, jeans, going through things, going onto seats of planes, going onto chairs in restaurants, going, you know, it, it, it's a litany of constant in, in the car, at people's houses, um, really, really hard to regulate flow and to keep it all together. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever been through um, personally, physically, is going through that, going through heavy bleeding and not, and, and it wouldn't matter what I did. It could be, I could be like, warrior ready, you know, pads and everything else. And there was still lots of uh, margin of error. And I was, it was a huge time of shame for me, a huge time of feeling really inadequate and really out of control and just hating life. And I know it seems like a small thing in comparison with what people are going through, but it was a very hard time. It was hard on my relationship because mm. I just didn't feel like myself. And 
there was never a good time for anything. I was just always menstruating. And always oh. worrying when you would, yeah, need to like duck out fast. or. And there yeah. was no rhyme or reason. So I never felt secure. So things like that, I think, are really important to talk about. And I think that's what Unmentionables, their show is going to do. And I'm, and I'm, I know we'll get them to address what they will talk about, what they won't talk about. Um, I'm really looking forward to having them on. And, you know, I love seeing great things happen to great people. I, I don't know Josie that well, but I've known Cynthia. She's one of my dearest friends. And we do lots of trips every year and, and spend a lot of time together. And, and I just know how legitimately earnest she is and how forthright and how she's normal. She's a normal person. You know, she's not affected by her fame or notoriety or, and she's a very, very well-educated person as far as female sexuality, human sexuality. So I think things that they talk about in the show will come with a lot of backup and a lot of science and a lot of factual um, information for people. So not only is it going to be a fun ride, uh, it's going to be really a place where people can learn. Well, you know, one one very scientific thing that Cynthia brought up when I chatted with her the other day was um, even how we compare, like we we usually say penis and vagina, like these are the two parallel items for men and women. And she's like, no, 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 no. Like, it's not the vagina. That's your birth canal. <laughs> your pleasure is actually your clitoris. And I, things I didn't think I'd be talking about with Jan Arden, but here we are. Well, she, like I said, it's just very form and function. And I think people will get correct information. It's not just going to be hearsay. You listen, when I found out, out about sex, I was 13 years old. I was a little late in the game because I know young people know it a lot sooner than that. My older brother was 16 and he just blurted it out. He just said it to me. In fact, I might've been younger than 13. I might've been 12. What did he say? He just said, the guy sticks his penis into the lady's thing. Like he just blurted it out and he was just laughing hysterically. And he was there with his friend, Doris. And I never stopped thinking about it for a month. I don't know who I brought it up to. I must've finally found the courage to talk to one of my friends. I can't remember, but not a great way to find that stuff out. There's a lot of baggage that comes with that. And, you know, information too soon is just information too soon. As promised, we are here with the creators of the brand new Top 10 podcast. They launched out into the world with a, with a vengeance, with a, with a passion, with some kick-ass spirit. Cynthia Loist, Josie Dyer here, their podcast Unmentionables. Welcome to two amazing very brave creators, may I say. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that so, Jan? <laughs> well, I mean, Sarah can attest to this. Unmentionables yeah. is unmentionable. Like, it, you guys are doing a podcast, and I think there's no one really doing what you guys have created out there. Uh, it, it's, it's uncomfortable things. I feel very voyeuristic listening to it. I was lucky enough <laughs> to talk to you guys several months ago on a segment. Um, but I, uh, I think it's talking about those things and being very transparent about messy houses and bathing suits that don't quite fit properly and bodily functions and farting, sexuality, uh, menopause, um, just the uncomfortable things that are squirm worthy. And as much as we don't, we don't want to talk about it. We sure as heck want to listen to somebody else talking about it. <laughs> You nailed it, though. You just basically put all of our, our things into a nutshell, didn't she, Josie? Yes, yeah, she did. She absolutely did. And we're the ones that are putting ourselves out there so everyone can laugh at us. <laughs> but you know so what? Fun. I think the hope is that we actually encourage other people to share their stories. And that has already happened. Like our first episode, not to leak too much, but... It, you know, it really is uh, about a topic, a taboo bodily function that 50% of the population have gone through, but hardly anyone ever talks about it. It's certainly not like you don't get a talk from your mother about, oh, you better watch out for this thing because it might happen. Can you give us a hint? Well, it involves your butt and it involves things protruding out of your butt. I think people can probably gather from there. And it was the thing that, uh, that Josie and I both were experiencing at the exact same time. Can I say it's word hemorrhoid? Go ahead. Yes, yes. it's hemorrhoid. hemorrhoid. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so the whole, I don't want to give away the whole first episode. People have to listen about oh. how it brought us together. But we were walking down the street literally days after we launched. 
And this woman is a very attractive woman in a very sharp jacket with her very attractive husband and I believe a baby. And they were walking down the street and they yelled out to us. And she goes, by the way, listen to your first podcast, loved it. And I'm going through the exact same thing. And we were just like, Josie didn't even know what the hell was going on. You were like, I think she's talking about something to do with the social, but <laughs> she was talking about her hemorrhoids. I love how you had to say she was a very attractive woman. Like she was cool. She's cool. And she's got hemorrhoids, but she's cool. How did yeah. you guys meet? How did you guys meet? Um, well, it started because I, the co- first of all, COVID. COVID, um, you know, I have an immune compromised son and I had no idea what COVID would look like or for him. And I didn't want to send him to back to school because I knew, you know, what a cold would do to him, never mind COVID. So I also knew that he needed to be around other kids. He needed to socialize because he's uh, you know, a guy who's just very, very shy. So I came up with this idea that I would have five families that live close by and we'd hire a teacher. All of us would pay for this teacher that would, in my basement, teach these kids during COVID. And I found uh, three families and then someone said to me, oh, Cynthia Lois from The Social is looking for something similar to this. And I had known her because I did come on The Social a couple of times. Similar to you, Jen. Yes. Yeah, I met her a couple of times and she was wonderful. And so then we met her and Jason came in my backyard um, and we kind of had like a, it was like a first date. <laughs> it was so awkward. There was donuts, which was like, it was like the kids were all in, they were in the pool, they were running around. But yeah, I really felt like, oh gosh, like, are we going to make the cut? Like, are we, you know, we made the cut. And let's be honest, like it was that kind of process because I was thinking there were people who wanted to come into the pod for different reasons. So we had to figure out like who was in there for the same reason that we were in there, you know, and I, uh, some people wanted to come to the pod because they didn't like the restrictions that the schools were setting. And I wanted someone to come into this pod who had the sort of, wanted the same thing as, as we did. And it also, we're kind of like, we, we couldn't see families. Like it was just us for a long time together. So we got really close, really fast. Yeah. Really close. Example of positive things coming out of the COVID restrictions, because had that not have happened, I doubt very much unmentionables would be on the table right now, Never mind on the air. So good things indeed do come out of bad things. Absolutely. So, so how do you feel like it's going because like I said, there's thousands and thousands of podcasts out there all vying for that listenership. So yes. how did it feel to see, because I, I saw your socials, uh, Cynthia, of the podcast being in that number, that coveted number 10 spot on a top 10 list. You know, I love, Jen, you know how much I adore you and I love that philosophy. There's so many things that you've taught me and that I keep and hold dear and that good things come out of bad things is a, is a constant. And I believe you also have said like timing, kind of you plant seeds in life, right? And things come to fruition at different times. And Josie and I, quite frankly, have been working on this in different incarnations for a long time. And I think we were starting to get to the point for a variety of boring reasons. Uh, it took us a long time to launch. And we were sort of worried like, oh God, did we sort of like lose our momentum? We were so excited about this at the beginning. But as it turns out, this clearly has been the exact right time that it was meant to launch. Mm -hmm. And you still didn't, we still didn't know when we launched it, if it was going to have any resonance, but we knew that our philosophy was like, we still have to have fun doing this. We're both busy moms. We both have full-time jobs. You know, Josie's a radio host. I work in television. And so no matter what, this couldn't feel onerous. And so uh, we were thrilled to basically do this run of press and then have the reaction that we have. Like clearly there is a need to have these. And I think it is in response to the social media perfectionism that keeps on creeping in, like makes people feel shitty about themselves all the time. Like, oh, I'm failing as a parent. Oh, I'm failing as a homemaker. I'm failing as a wife. Like, and I, I think that we're just trying to say, screw all of that. And, uh, you know, it's, we're more interesting when we acknowledge our messiness. <laughs> well, I mean, we can use the bathing suit as an example. Um, that was a very recent post, you know, Josie goes on the socials being like, hey, I'm a 40 year old woman. I just bought a very low cut bathing suit. Can I even do this? Talks about the fact that she would feel more comfortable if there was a filter and she had shaved. Right. These are things that you just don't see on mm -hmm. on social media. What's something that sort of felt um, like really liberating out of this week of, of your first week? Well, I mean, I don't want to talk a lot about the first podcast, but it was, I, I need to say, first of all, that that first podcast, Cynthia was just saying we worked together for about two years. That first podcast honestly developed a week or two weeks before launch. 
Like that was something that was randomly, we need an intro. We need an intro podcast. And it just started. And it was probably for me, um, the most amount of shame I had dealing with that issue, uh, the lie that I kept up for years at work telling people I had to have surgery for a, I told them I had a thyroid, that problem, and that's why I needed but surgery. the thyroid was in your bum. So big deep. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to convince Josie. We had to, like, we recorded it and then we stopped. And I said, Josie, because she was initially, we, we were just going to talk about hemorrhoids yeah. generally. And she didn't want to share her story. And I was like, as we stopped it, I was like, you got, like, we got to go bigger, go home. We can't, like, fuck around here. And so yeah. she, um, and all credit to you, Josie, because that was a big leap. But do you uh -huh. feel liberated that everyone knows about your body? I do. I do. I like there's moments when I'm like people at school, I know the parents are listening to the pod and like to the podcast and I'm thinking they're like they know I went and had hemorrhoid surgery, but I think I'm over it. I think I'm over it. Yeah, it feels good. Well, that whole thing is celebrities mm -hmm. are just right. like us. Right? So every person like Cynthia can't use this just statistically 50% of people are dealing with hemorrhoids. So there's there half the people are listening going, oh, finally someone's talking about it and I don't have to be like living under this blanket, this cloak of secrecy. And the other 50% are just like, hmm, you know, I at least I'm gonna be somewhat prepared yeah. if I do have a little flap of skin that seems to be coming out or some discomfort. My, my mom had them her <laughs> whole life. I, I never have had, but my mom was really so, she just was held yeah. hostage by these things. It was a real discomfort for my yeah. dear mom. And, uh, you know, finally she just, you know, the, the, the doors came off the barn and she was able to talk about it and get help and go to her. She didn't even want to go to the doctor. So you have to think about how that opens up people's dialogues and how they, it takes away shame because it's all about talking about things. More coming up with Cynthia Loist and Josie Dye and Unmentionables on the Jan Arden podcast and show when we come back. Welcome back to the Jan Arden podcast and show. I'm here with Sarah Burke, Cynthia Loist, Josie Dyer here. Is that one of your goals in Unmentionables to kind of take the blinders off of sensitive issues, whether it's sexuality or hemorrhoids or whatever it is you guys tackle to make people feel less alone? Yes, that's a hundred percent it, Jan. Like for me, I have this belief system that it's secrets and shame that really, you know, do a number on people's mental health. And I came from a family where uh, my sister and I have always talked about how we've got the sense that there are kind of things that have been left unsaid that you just kind of subtly pick up on. And I think a lot of family members can relate to that idea. And anybody who's been raised with any kind of religious background as well, um, there's a lot of shame embedded in that. And so for me in particular, I definitely feel I would much rather, even if sometimes we go too far and someone says, I didn't really need to know about that. I'd rather that and normalize it. That I know that Josie and I are good people. I know that we are good parents. I know that we are you know, caring friends, good daughters, um, all the above. And so I'd rather that than what you see 90% of the time, which is people who are you know, hiding stuff about themselves and so deeply ashamed of it that 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 a compulsiveness comes out in them mm -hmm. or you know uh misbehaviors i mean i'm thinking about john tory right now even it's just like you know there's so much shame and secrecy and then it burbles out in these awful bombastic ways and so you know i've been asked like oh, are, you, are you worried that your kids are going to hear this and at first i had to stop and I, and then a friend of mine actually said it, your your sons are going to be proud of you as women who are coming forward and speaking your truths and, and have encouraged them to embrace their body and their awkwardness and their messiness as well. So yeah, it's very important. Are you worried at all or concerned about having a predominantly female listenership? Or do you think you want to go after men a little more aggressively? Or will that be kind of uh, an add-on to the mom listening in the car or in the van or on a Sunday morning having coffee when you guys are just there with the uncles, the brothers, the fathers, the, you know, the partners. So I'm, I'm wondering if that, if that's on your, I, I mean, I think all. that, yes, we've had a lot of women who really love this. Um, but I think there's going to be a lot of men too, 
because there are some episodes coming up that uh, that men are like going to definitely want to listen to, <laughs> like definitely. Yeah. So we have some episodes like coming up really soon, probably our fourth or fifth episode. My son just walked in the room, and I probably shouldn't say. Oh, it here, I'll I'll do it. I'll you do, do it. it. You do, do it. it. I'm just Maybe gonna get rid of him. Yeah. Okay. You go get rid of it, and I'll be like, it's a. <laughs> <laughs> I feel um, like I know too much. I'm I like, oh, I know, I know what's coming. Well, it's funny. Obviously, my son actually even said he's like, come and listen to this. I'm like, some things aren't for you. Like at this age, this is not for you. I've also told my mother that too. Like, my mom, it's not for you. You don't need to listen to this. If she does, she does. And the same thing goes with Jai. But we are talking about things like um, fantasies. We're talking about um, weird, strange porn that we're interested in. Um, we're talking about um, like. Uh, a woman that we met who has not one, but two husbands. We are also talking about this uh, researcher from Canada who studied um, infidelity and found out there are ways you can cheat proof your relationship. So I feel like that's some great tips for people. If that's something yeah. of interest. Well, that's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> but we are also talking about body image too. And like how we, we really did a number on ourselves uh, and got a little bit, Carried away. It carried away with uh, a weight loss program. Well, I, I loved your post on the sort of the low key mustache that you had during Thank puberty, you. Cynthia. That was just, you're, you're a dark haired girl with the dark brows and that dark chestnut. And you had, you know, the hormones yep. were raging. They were having a party yep. in your body. And you had the faint little mustache, which must have been terrifying. Terrifying. For a young girl coming into, I like that boy or I like that girl. Or I was I, called Mustache Woman. Oh, I was called Mustache Woman by, I, by a boy named Carlo. And it was just, it was so, and no, and no tools. But you remember there was that like Nair, this stinky, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about brands here, but anyway, there was a thing. We know it. Out in the 80s and 90s that you would put on your parts of your body that would basically dissolve. God knows it took probably a few years off my life. And I would use it there. And I became obsessed with this girl that I worked with. Her name was Angelica. And she bleached her mustache. And I really wanted to ask her questions about it. But I was afraid of her. Because no one talked about, like, what do you do? And again, this is in no way to say some people might want to keep their hair on their face. But to each your own. Well, women especially. That's right. Any sign of a stray hair um, is mortifying. But I, I really think what you guys are doing is important. Because if we can't laugh at ourselves... I just don't know what's left for us because exactly. our humanness is is what makes us so freaking weird and great and wonderful. And we're all weirdos in our own ways. I'm I'm glad that I'm a big weirdo. And I like you because you're a weirdo. And if Joseph's a friend of yours, she's a weirdo too. <laughs> we're weirdos. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. And Sarah, you please chime in here. What would, for me... I would love to hear you guys talk about uh, like things like the, the labias and and how, you know, some women are very concerned with the length of their lips or the oh. lack thereof or just how their vaginas work. Because I think every woman that I know, we've had conversations with girlfriends. Sarah, that may seem a little no, nutty to you. My left boob is so much bigger than my right. Like, there's so many things. <laughs> yeah, we we have touched on this. Yeah, we we've we video and we have a podcast coming up, which ended up the pelvic floor podcast. We started talking about this, but this will probably be a podcast in its own for sure. I, we definitely will be talking about labia. Well, a friend of mine who absolutely shall name nameless had a, a procedure to mm -hmm. get her labia basically removed. It just not, not how that just go because her? she wow. was so self conscious about any of that or or her even and she'd been married for a long long time and her husband's like honey I don't care but she just felt like there was way too much going on and so she had a, a procedure done. You know, I mean, I've gone on rants before. There was a girl, a young woman. I, there was used to be a restaurant that I used to go to regularly around my work, and um, there was a young woman there who decided to disclose to me because she knew I talked about sexuality on TV. And she said, Oh, I really want to get this procedure done. My, I, you know, I'm really insecure about my labia down there. And I, I was really, I was just like, it doesn't matter. It's beautiful where there's a laser that means it, and they're removing something that means it will be scar yeah. tissue. So you don't know if you're going to be losing sensitivity. This is a newer surgery. You don't know. Um, and she went ahead and had it done. 
And the truth is, is that like, like anything else, if um, for many women, your desire, it, you know, it, it, it exists in the way that we feel yeah. about our bodies. Those things mm-hmm. are intertwined. So I do believe for some people that might be the right choice, but I would love to see a world. And this is why we will do a labia podcast where we just know as a given that there is a spectrum of labia. And I mean, I have mullet, like I would call it a mullet one's shorter on one side and one's longer on the other. And I do not give a fuck. It works. It all works together. And if I ever encountered a lover who was like, mm, I'm not sure, but the way this looks like uh, that would be, t- I and mean, that's never happened. And, I, and I've had a number of people in that region. So <laughs> like, I, I would just be like, get out, get well, out. It just, so. and these are all things that it, people just can't fathom talking about on let's call it the radio for, for all count, accounts and purposes that you can like actually listen to. Um, is there something that you would never discuss or never go near? Or is, is it a wide open space on unmentionables? I think it's wide open. Wow. Yeah. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. I think it's wide open. Do we have something? I don't know. I feel like well, I, there are things that I, I worry about that I think about and that I have talked about with I think we have to be careful. I think we have to acknowledge that we are white cisgender women. We adore each other. We uh, we are cognizant of our privilege, mm-hmm. and I want to make sure we we know the power of having a platform, and want to make sure that even if we have questions about things, we want to make sure that we uh, have the right I guess. guess. So I just think like there are topics you might have in a dinner party conversation that are out of curiosity that that maybe you'd be afraid to say out loud. We do want to try to have those, but we have to be very careful because the last thing we would want to do is ever step in it and, and be misunderstood. And we recognize that we have a lot of responsibility. Cynthia, we just had a discussion about this um, a few days ago on on my podcast. And you were talking about um, acknowledging that there are different intersectionalities to this podcast. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that, how you want to bring diverse voices and female identifying people into this space too. Mm-hmm. It is so, I think with Joseph yeah. and I both, it's critical because, you know, when we first started this, I think I was very, I was like, who needs another two white women podcast? And the truth is you don't. Um, so, uh, you know, I think we do bring our unique stories and we, you know, this came out of a friendship. It came out naturally, but as a result of that, we are prioritizing diversity in our guests. We, uh, and especially for many topics to make sure that those voices are heard. Even one podcast that we're about to put out next week, we're going to even redo um, to have different voices on it. So I think that's something that, yes. you know, we, we recognize for sure. Where do you feel like brand partnerships will land on a series like this? <laughs> because of course, at the end of the day, it's nice to monetize these really great conversations, it takes a lot of time out of your lives and it's not like you want to do it for free forever. Um, You'd like to have a listenership that supports and can monetize this show. Um, Have you thought about who's going to advertise on? Who's your ideal? Yeah. Well, I think any kind of like sex toys. I think our ideal is anyone who has a little bit of money. (laughs) Preparation H, if you're listening. Preparation H should be right there. (laughs) I'm willing to take Preparation H at this point. I mean, we don't even, that's the fun part about us. We really don't know how this platform works. Like, let's be honest, Cynthia. We don't know. Like we, we know we're great storytellers. We know we want to have a lot of fun, but we don't know how to do any of that stuff yet. Right? Like, let's be honest. We, we have no idea. We have other people working on that. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. No, I mean, it, it, it absolutely is a process. And I think you'll be really surprised at who steps forward. I mean, God, it might be Betty Crocker or Duncan Hines or something so random right. and so out there that you're like, what? What is happening here? We can make it work. We will make it work. We will make all of them work. <laughs> It'll be mini lube. It'll be like an oil. Mr. Uh, lube. Where you get your oil changed in your car. Mr. Lube. Oh my like, God. Oh, Mr. Wow. Lube, if you're listening, come and maybe that was the wrong word too, but sponsor <laughs> <Monster> us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just, I'm, I'm not going to keep you guys forever. We've, we've certainly got a million questions for you, but I just want to congratulate you on being, on stepping out there, on putting your messy bathrooms and your messy houses and your 
near hemorrhoids and God only knows what else is coming down the pike here. Oh, there's lots. <laughs> but the thing to remember here is that you guys take yourself, you just don't take yourself seriously. You're not coming at this like, scientists with this really clinical view that takes the fun out of being a human being because there's lots of challenges it's not easy being a person and i think it's in a really important way for us to connect with each other and uh congratulations on everything i wish you nothing but success i can't wait to see where you go and and i'll sarah and i will be cheering you on and reposting anything you got going I just really love what you're doing. I think it's really cool and funny as all get out. And uh, having had the opportunity to talk to you guys that one day months ago, maybe that 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 uh, we'll see the light of day at some point. I don't know. It definitely will. Oh my gosh, Jen! Absolutely. You gotta give us. You gotta give us a little teaser. Can we tease that one. Yeah. Okay. Josie, you want to do that? Well, yeah. Without saying too much, I heard a rumor that it was about the two of you. Cynthia. And uh, I didn't know Cynthia yet, or I didn't know you as well, Jan. So um, I heard the rumor, and then once I got comfortable with Cynthia, I think I, I asked the question. You asked, right? Is that a good enough teaser? I think just yeah, it there is coming by me. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good tease. <laughs> that's coming up. People are gonna have to stay tuned. Thank you guys. Also, you you have an incredible thing, and I, I can't believe you continue to do pump out this podcast. Uh, like weekly basis and you guys are killing it and uh i just uh, yeah thank you so much for including us it really means the world honestly like your your stamp of approval is everything to us so thank you well i'm sorry to hear that there's a full circle podcast moment here and i think we can maybe get into shame a little bit and how it makes us do weird things this is why i think the result of of your podcast unmentionables will help liberate people from their shame So Josie, I had you on my podcast. You were the first guest on my Women in Media podcast. We recorded, everything goes fine. And I I brought up this time that I felt like you were like a little standoffish with me. And it was just about women in in community and mentorship and all of that. And I said, yeah, at that time, like I felt like it was kind of weird. I had met you so many times and you were kind of acting like you didn't know me. Like I was perplexed. So we finish recording. You call me. And you're like, you have to take that part out. And your point was, oh my God, it had nothing to do with you, right? Like that that was the point of the conversation. Yes. But what's so funny about this is this is now part of one of the episodes. We're going to send you over to Unmentionables to listen to that. Tell me about what hiding a secret does inside the human body. Yeah, well, that's the thing. So when <laughs> I when I saw Sarah that day uh, at Lollapalooza, Sarah had no, known my boyfriend very well, and I was having an affair at the time, and I had was with somebody else, and I never expected to meet anyone from Toronto uh, in Chicago where I was at, and so I probably just had didn't think that we – I kind of probably put my head down and – hope that you didn't see me <laughs> and walk by. And I was like, why is she ignoring me? Like we yeah. know each other. <laughs> yeah. That's all I remember. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so isn't funny. that crazy? And that's the second episode yeah. is all about yeah. that particular affair and how that's when it came to a head. Yeah, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Uh, no pun intended. But yeah, right there in Chicago where you were feeling super guilty oh, and super. So you never know what's going on behind no, you don't. clothes. You have no idea what a person's situation is. And I think the lesson is never personalize yeah. someone's reaction to you. Yep. It's impossible. You're like, what a bitch. Or why would they be like that? It, 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 don't ever make it about yourself in any situation. Yeah. It, That's the other person's stuff. That was, that was Josie's yeah, stuff, yeah. not yours. Yeah. But good for you for like calling yeah. and just saying, listen, uh, I, you might want to take that down. Cause I'm kind of been up to something and you need to understand why. And, yeah, it breaks my heart to think that for I don't know how many because I had no idea that, that you felt like that. So it breaks my heart to think that for years after you probably thought that I dismissed you in any way. Like that was like that's not me, right? That was like oh my god, how could anyone think right. that? So, but what I, the lesson there for sure though is like you know when you're distracted by keeping something inside, you know all sorts of things go awry. So share your stories with Josie and Cynthia on yeah. Unmentionables. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> hey, wait a second. It's not unmentionable at all. They're mentioning it in everything. 
this is most advertising. Oh, uh, have fun. We'll we'll touch base with you guys to see how you're going. And uh, I can't wait to have our listeners weigh in on, on, you know, what they think. And I'm sure they have a billion questions for you. And hopefully no one drove into the ditch. As I said, the word labia, I'm really hoping that <laughs> finally crossed the line. <laughs> Cynthia Lois, Josie Dye, Unmentionables. You can find it on iHeartRadio or wherever you stream your favorite podcast. Go hit that subscribe button because then they will just show up on your phone or on your device, and you won't have to worry about looking for Cynthia and Josie. And if you see them on the street, for God's sakes, go up and give Josie a hug and say, I'm sorry about your hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you next time. Continued success. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Houdini.